Hi everyone, Darren here, and today I wanted to discuss tuning the distributor and what I mean by tuning the distributor. Um, I've mentioned in previous episodes that I have used uh, recurved power spark units uh, when I go tuning uh, to fix worn out distributors on customers' cars. So today I've thought that perhaps I should go over in a little more detail what exactly do I mean and what am I doing when I say that I am tuning a distributor. So stay tuned while I go through all these steps. So what exactly do I mean by tuning? Well, it's an attempt to improve the performance by optimizing the timing of the spark in the cylinder. And we want peak pressure in the cylinders to achieve approximately four degrees post top dead center while running. And for various reasons, uh, our ignition curves do not match ideal either because of uh, restricted air intakes or exhausts or cam design for whatever reason uh, every engine needs their own special curve to run at their peak performance now a standard generic kind of curve will work and in fact you can run any engine on practically any curve but the problem is that at some point there is a peak volumetric efficiency that will be achieved and at that point if the timing is is too far advanced or too early then what will happen is you'll end up with detonation or knock. So uh, yes, you can make it run on any curve, but if you want it to run well, these are some of the details that you need to pay attention to uh, when doing a tuning. So um, let's start off by why are they bad? So in a previous video, I had mentioned um, why you'd want to replace one. So I discussed the details of the wear on uh, the the cam lobe and uh, just issues that it caused with dwell angles and that nature. Um, there's also additional places that they wear out. For instance, this cam here says 10 degrees of timing. Well, this one actually measured out at 12, and I measured them using a protractor on a ignition rotor. Not the most sophisticated design, but uh, hey, it works. Uh, another point of wear is that these springs can just get weak. And when they get weak, they start um, allowing the distributor to advance earlier. And uh, what causes the advance is that these weights move outwards. And so this whole unit rotates in this direction, causing the rotor to move earlier and earlier and uh, changing the timing. So if these relax, or if this gets worn out, and uh, in this particular design, this is a 25D unit, the weights actually rub against the bottom plate here, so there is friction. All these things contribute to bad ignition timing. So what I want to discuss is things that can be done and things that should be done. So as I mentioned before, you really need to measure your advanced cam. And before you even start measuring this, you really should actually decide on what is the application that you're dealing with? So if you're dealing with a race engine or you know a vehicle that does towing, they're gonna to have totally different advanced curves. So start with the why in the application and go from there. Also economy tuning will be slightly different as well. But what can be done is we measure the cam. So whatever cam you have in your distributor, measure its overall advance you know, disregard the number. It might be right, it might be not be, but uh, you need to measure it first and decide if this cam matches your application. Secondly, um, <clears throat> decide on the how the shape of the curve. So for instance, the curves will go along and then advance to a, some final point and then plateau again. How fast they advance, the rate of advance, and uh, how quickly they advance in the middle will dictate what you're going to do next because once you've decided on the cam then it's time to move on to the springs now the weights themselves in these units are all identical per series so all the 25 d's are the same as the 45 d's are all the same the 65 d's are all the same um, so that those don't really change however you can add or subtract weight to change the rate of advance as needed um, what I have here is a set of springs. So the ones on the left here are from the PowerSpark distributor, which I use often, but I find that the springs are incorrect for um, 
the mini application that I tend to tune them for. On the right here are a set of springs that I have actually made. And when I make springs, I'm using a distributor machine that gives me the number of advanced degrees that it is being uh, provided based on a speed that's being inputted into the shaft. So I'm literally recreating the engine turning speeds and measuring the degree on a degree wheel similar to this on my distributor machine. And the only way you can find springs that are appropriate application is to have a machine that can do this accurately and repeatedly. Uh, for instance, down here is a set of springs that I've made in the past. They're all very similar, but they all give slightly different rates of advance when um, put into one of these distributors. So it's critical that you be able to measure what you're doing at various RPM points and uh, make minor adjustments from there. If you don't have a way of measuring the curve, then you should not even attempt to modify your distributor because you can just mess it up and it can mess it up very fast. If you're going to tune our standard Lucas unit, uh, first step usually is to completely strip all this down, clean, polish the shaft, and uh, lubricate it so that when it when it's operated on your distributor machine, it'll operate smoothly. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is that these later units, you can see that air gap there. It means that this, the weights do not actually contact the lower plate, so that one less point of friction on these later units, which makes them slightly better. Um, the power spark unit, which I have here, is of similar design. You can see that there's an air gap right here, and the weights do not contact the plate uh, when, when being operated. Um, on the power spark units, typically I have to measure the angle, which is generally way too much, and then add material and grind this down until I've achieved the correct advance. Also, I end up changing the springs, as I mentioned earlier, but uh, these units are very nice because you start out with a clean, fresh unit to work with. Um, and they also have modules that allow you to run high power ignition, which is excellent for fixing minis or any other car that has to pass emissions. Um, the higher the power, the more efficient the burn can be, and so therefore it can be uh, lower in the uh, mixture scale. And when I say lower, I mean you're running, say, 14.7 uh, to 1 or lambda 1 on the emissions scale. Check out the other video I made of the pickup truck running at lambda 1, and you'll understand what I'm getting at. I wasn't going to get into any specifics about curves because they're all unique to the car, but I just wanted to make sure that the basics of what I'm doing when I say I'm tuning, as in you know the springs and the cam and the weights, um, was clear, because not many people know how to tune a distributor, and uh, it's very important that you understand the basics and not, don't just run in and grab a file and start cutting th things away or start bending springs to do what you think they're going to do, because they may not do what you think they're going to do at all. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me a message and contact me through my profile. Um, otherwise, stay tuned for another episode. Later on, I'm sure it'll be more ignition distributor talk, because it's such an important topic when it comes to these classic cars and um, keeping them on the road. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.